Uh, next, we'd like to recognize, after a year hiatus, our Wild Sheep Biologist Hall of, Wall of Fame, and to present that award that he created, I'd like to invite up Kevin Hurley and our chair, Perry Wolf. Thank you, Gray. This is obviously something I feel very strong about. Um, started this 16 years ago. Um, my family at the time, we made this donation. And the point of this was to honor and acknowledge a certain set of people that really understood the connection between sound management and hunting opportunities. As uh, you just heard from Keel and Lee, the first recipient was Jim Karpowitz, one of my heroes and a good friend, and we lost him much too soon in the last year. We've had 14 recipients so far. You can see the first six, the second six, two more. We took last year off, and we didn't want to double up, so this will be the 15th inductee in the Wild Sheep Biologist Wall of Fame. Unfortunately, she cannot be in the room tonight. She is home in British Columbia, but I would like to announce Dr. Helen Schwanza, retired wildlife vet from the province of British Columbia, as this year's inductee into the Wild Sheep Biologist Wall of Fame. And since Dr. Wolf and Dr. Schwancha, I call them twin daughters, different mothers, and I'm not sure which is the evil twin, but Perry's helping me, Helen's watching online, so they're texting back and forth, so we're gonna have a little bit of fun at Helen's expense. I bet a lot of people didn't know that she grew up, she grew up in a circus family, um, and then, her first real backpack trip was from Canada. She made it to Woodstock, and uh, from there it was all uphill. She tried being a jockey and a horse trainer for a while. She ha had time spent at various daycare facilities. She tried a, a, a few fashion shows and runway models. She was quite the fashion icon. So it led her to Hollywood, and she tried to get a job doing hair and makeup. Well, you can tell how that went. She even tried out, and this, all these photos were approved by Helen, so there's, there's no uh, risk on my part. She had a co-conspirator uh, that she met, also a wannabe aspiring actress, and they, they kind of fell in together, and started trying to get bit parts in movies. Wouldn't you know, they got their great break as stunt doubles in the Thelma and Louise movie. And we all know how that worked out going off the cliff at the end. Here's a picture four or five years ago down in the Red Rocks near Vegas. And uh, fortunately, they both lived through that crash. And no kidding, that is Brad Pitt. After that, one of the best things Helen and Perry led the way on is this set of documents uh, for the Western Association, all the Western Fish and Game Agencies on you know, health sampling protocols. So they've done a, a lot of work. Helen has been a veterinarian, a wildlife veterinarian for more than 35 years. She's been an adjunct professor. She's been involved with the uh, Canadian Wildlife Health Cooperative, the Wildlife Disease Association, on and on. She got her master's degree at the University of Saskatchewan working on bighorn sheep in the East Kootenays um, back in the 80s. That's when I first met her, 1986. And she's had a career-long focus on proactive wild sheep health and management. Long-time involvement with the Wild Sheep Working Group and the Wildlife Health Committee. She's taught everything from students to biologists to conservation officers about a mobilization, large carnivore interaction. And two of Helen's protégés are now wildlife vets 
Dr. Kylie Thacker in British Columbia and Dr. Namajutha in the Northwest Territories. I've always looked at Helen as a teacher, sometimes a drill sergeant. Those who know her know exactly what that was. Sometimes a cut up, but always, always, always a respected colleague who loves wild sheep. She's had an incredible working relationship with First Nations, Guide Outfitter Associations, agriculture sector, domestic sheep producers, public health agencies in British Columbia and beyond. Lots of publications in her resume, and she's been a longtime go-to resource for so many of us. She's an accomplished professional, but she's also a highly respected wildlife vet, a colleague, and a friend to Perry, to me, and so many of us in the room. In recognition of her nearly 40-year and continuing career and for her leadership on wild sheep health, wild sheep management and conservation, and so much more, please help me congratulate Dr. Helen Schwancha on her induction into the Wild Sheep Foundation's Wild Sheep Biologist Wall of Fame. I can't tell you how disappointed I am that I'm not with you to accept this award and to thank Kevin and the Wild Sheep Foundation in person for such a profound honor. I'm writing this before I know what's been said, and I may never know what's been said, but if I know Kevin, I know he's told stories. The pictures probably helped, but he may have exaggerated a little bit. My relationship with wild sheep and this family goes back much farther than Kevin or most of you. I was searching for inspiration at the time, how to combine being a vet with wildlife research, and then came along bighorn sheep pneumonia in BC's Kootenai region. It was 1993 that I asked the then FNAS board for funding. Um, they funded me. They studied it, I studied it, you've studied it, and we still study it. We have come a long way, and we've got lots more tools and lots more knowledge. And I'm, I'm very glad that I've had the opportunity to have a small role, at least. In closing, it's clear to me that the complexities of keeping sheep on the mountain are not just frustrating, they're not just challenging, but they're also a rich part of the inspiration that feeds our collaborations and motivations. We are reaching our goals, and we will probably surpass them soon. I thank you, my friends. I, again, wish I was there, and thank you ever so much. As Kevin said, I've worked with Helen a lot. Not only is she an amazing woman, a consummate professional, excellent veterinarian, but one of the things that impresses me the most about her is she is so giving of her time to students, to biologists, to anybody that wants to talk about wildlife health, and she will do anything to help them learn and grow so we can all be better at what we do. So, Helen, well-deserved, and I wish you were here. <laughs>